testimony. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Blessed be the Lord. I'd like to take just a minute. I'm certainly glad to be here. Glad to see my brother in law, my sister in law here. They moved down to Texas. They bought my place today. I never thought that I'd see them here. I didn't have to beg them. I got a brother in law been here now for about three or half, four years. We've asked and asked and asked and that he never come. And I asked him one time. Thank God for it. one time. And they said, yeah, we're coming. Yeah. So we don't have no church clothes. I said, well, do you want me to wear the same thing you're wearing? Yeah. Said, well, I wouldn't care. Or it's not what I wear, it's what's right here. Yeah. What's right here. Yeah. And God, I appreciate, Brother Steve, what you said, because I was the same way. I was a lost person. I was a lost person. Somehow or another, somehow, God reached down and got me by the hand and pulled me out of the bar. And touched me and helped me get better and helped me do better. And like I said, I'm here to stay. Amen. I'm not leaving. I may not think I'm doing right all the time. But I'm getting along fine. Yes. More better than I've ever had in my whole life. More than ever. Yes. God kept me from dying two or three times. Amen. I've been run over. I've been shot. I've been stabbed. Twice I've been run over. It failed two stories. But God seen something in my heart. Look at the miracle. He seen something right here. That he knows there's something there to be taken care of. And he knows how to take care of it. He knows how to take care of it. He knows how to reach down. And get a hold of your heart. And say, you belong to me. You're my child. You come follow me. And I'm glad I give up and follow you. I'm a miserable person if I'm not in church. Amen. And that's my wife. I'm a miserable person. But I'm here to stay. Thank God I got somebody I can lean on. I can touch. And I can ask for help. And he helps. He does, Brother Dean. He helps me more than people know. He knows how to get to my heart. He knows how to get on your hand. And God can lead you. Yeah. So I'm glad I'm here tonight. I'm not sitting back here because I'm back then, but I'm sitting back here because of my, my family. They're my family. I love them. We ain't I always know them, but now I love them to death. I'm glad to see them around. They're going to come back. I hope they come back again. I hope, so. I hope they come back again. I, I asked Randy, I said, I don't wear shorts, but if you want me to, I'll wear the shirt you like to cut. Yes. That would have been a a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> but y'all keep praying for us. And thank you for welcoming the family. Thank you for welcoming the family. I don't want to take much time, but Brother Steve, <laughs> you know, I didn't, I didn't have to be here tonight. I could have been anywhere else. Yes. I live in Tampa. Yes. <laughs> but you know, when I get down here, I told Brother Steve earlier, you know, you got to come by the, you got to come by the story towns. Yes. Because you got to get some of that that'll keep you enduring till the end. Yes. You know, yes. uh, I was here uh, uh, some time back, and I, Brother, St I know what Brother Steve was talking about. You stopped my truck out there by his welding shop and just talked to him some. Yes. yes. Loved him. Loved him when he was in the world. Yes. <laughs> you know, we ain't always been good people. But God seen something in us to take care of. Yes. You know, I like to relate it to a, a story that I heard uh, about kissing frogs. You know, uh, that, the uh, old frog, green, old slimy looking thing, and he's sitting out on a lily pad. Yeah. And he only does say, Ribby. Ribbit, now translated to uh, English is that, I need help. I need help. <laughs> but you know, behind that old frog, there's a slimy pool back there. Come on. And if he jumps off that lily pad and he gets into it, he'll stir up all kinds of mess. Come on. And, uh, but he'll get back, crawl himself back up on that lily pad and he'll say, Ribbit, Ribbit. Translated again, that's help. I love you. Help me. Help me. Yeah. You know, and I was that old frog one day. Yes. And I used to, I used to get around and say, "Ribbit, 
really translated. I'd say, would you help me some? Oh, yeah. Would you just love me some? Praise God. And they'd be on their way to the king's house. I know they was because they had King James in their hand. Amen. They'd go on the Bible. slimy frog that was sitting there. But you know there was a fellow one day in a truck. Yes. He was behind me and I, as we going out the highway and I'm riveting and riveting and coming on and he said, I translated, you know, I said, would you love me? I need something. Would you help me? Amen. And he started telling me about a prince. Amen. <laughs> prince. A prince. Amen. Yeah. And uh, he said, I'll, I'll show him to you. <laughs> I'm going to let you see him. Yeah. Yes. So he uh, he brought me down here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This building was about, right, the wall was right here. Yeah. Right, that way. Yeah. And he brought me down here and he said, everything's going to be all right. I said, ribbit, ribbit, <laughs> translated into English to you, is thank you, thank you loving me. Glory. <laughs> and so, anyway, the prince wasn't here that night. The prince was off somewhere else. So I waited another week or so, and I come back. I was... You know, I was thick in the world. I was seeing that old slimy pool, you know, that yeah, old sure. dirty green water. Yeah. And I was stirring up things. I was doing the, everything I was big enough to do, yeah, sure. and some things a little more than what I was big enough to do. <laughs> but I come back in here, yeah. and I sat down, and uh, uh, Prince wasn't here again, was he? <laughs> I had to come back the third time. And I was looking for this prince. Because I kept seeing ribbit, ribbit, yeah. translated. As they're going by, I know they're still going to the king's house because they had their King James in their hand. All right. But they had a rut wore out. They got a rut wore out. You know what a rut is? Yeah. That's a grave with both ends kicked out. Okay? But I come back in. The young fella brought me in. Made all kinds of excuses to get me here. And uh, this time when I come in, come through the doors and back over there about where Melina's <laughs> sitting, except behind her. And I come through that door and it was about 9.30 that night. Yes. And I didn't slow down <laughs> because somebody was here and it was calling me. And I come down that way. Oh, and I fell on God. my face right about over where that aisle Thank is you. right now. Amen. There's some brothers here right now that know that not, that happened. Amen. They know that happened because they're still here. They're still Thank hanging you. on. Amen. And every once in a while, like I said to Brother Steve a while ago, every once in a while when I get the opportunity, to get back down this way, I'm coming by the storehouse. Because I got to get that bread that's going to take me, that make me stronger up there in that, uh, uh, they call it, uh, truckers call it Cigar City. Thank God you're here. around Tampa, because my brother's Marlo. And uh, I, I, I love y'all. See, I thought uh, Brother Steve said, uh, this group of people here, they love you. They love you. This is my family. Ribbit. Ribbit. You love me. Somebody kissed me one day. And I was there. I, I wasn't that old slimy green frog anymore. I still hold Jesus' name in my mouth. And I believe that. I'm not here by accident. Like I said when I started, I could have been anywhere else. I could have drove back to, toward Tampa when I got done with my business here in Bradenton just as easy as I drove down here. Matter of fact, it'd probably been better because it wasn't raining when I finished my business. Yeah, but I wanted to be here. I wanted to be here. There's a lot of you who was here 
when I came here. Yes. Yes. Fourteen years ago, I had a massive heart attack. Fourteen years ago. Massive. And somebody said I wouldn't make it another year because I don't eat right. That sister said that she had to take care of herself. The doctor gave me a plan to get another year or so in my life. Somebody says, well, how do you remember to eat the right things? I said, the easiest way to do it is if you get it in your mouth, and if it tastes good, spit it out. You ain't supposed to have it. <laughs> I eat what I want. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, I eat a lot more than I should. As you can probably tell, but God will let me know when it's time. And as long as I delight myself in Him, He'll give me the desires in my heart. Now, that's what I said here some time back. Uh, he said He'll give you what you need or everything or what you should, what you need. That's what it is, about what you need. No, He'll give you the desires of your heart. And that's your wants. But the catch is, if you delight yourself in Him and believe that He's going to do it, He'll do it. And if you get, if you ask somebody to pray for you, first thing, just make sure you believe it. Because if, if you don't, you're wasting everybody's time. through them double doors right there you feel the love in this church you feel the passion that everybody comes here and wants to worship the Lord I uh, was reading in 2 Samuel 22 and 37 and it says thou hast enlarged my steps under me so that my feet did not slip but Steve when you're going through them trials and them tribulations he enlarged them feet so you could get that balance and that stability so you wouldn't fall over he kept your balance through them troubled times <laughs> I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. But there's been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave me sweet consolation. And my trials only come to make me strong. Darkest hours, but in those 
church did too and uh, when I saw how the the saints of God moved in one mind and one accord oh, yes. how they allowed themselves to be used by the Holy Ghost yes, uh, brother Dick May he was absolutely beside himself I can't tell you what that did for me brother May and each and every one that moved under the power of the Holy Ghost it touched me I was sitting right there at the house and the Holy Ghost was coming in and I was feeling it. And uh, I, I told uh, Sherry and the kids when they came home. And uh, they came home like you're supposed to come home from church. Um, they were buzzing. I mean, they wanted to talk about it. And uh, I told them, I said, well, I believe something happened for me too. And uh, the Wednesday before that Sunday, I went to uh, the doctor. And the Tuesday before that, they did uh, x-rays on my foot. And uh, that Wednesday, I went and saw the doctor, and I walked in, and uh, he said, I want you to sit down. He said, I don't want you to walk out of here. I don't want you to put anything pressure on your foot or anything. You have what's called um, um, charcoal foot. And I didn't know what that was. And he was telling me how it, it, the bones break, and it causes a deformity. And you won't be able to wear shoes like what you call shoes. They would, it would look really weird. Anyway. Um, but he was so uh, adamant about me not, not even getting up to walk to the wheelchair. He said, you don't understand. You have multiple fractures all the way across the top of your foot. 
They're not clean all the way through, but they can snap at any time. You also have osteoporosis all over your foot. And um, I said, well, okay, you know. And I've been hit um, with um, so much in the last few little while. And God has proven himself time and time and time and time again. And um, when I walked out of there, obviously I wasn't bouncing like I was when I came in. And uh, so uh, back to the Sunday night service, I felt something happen to me. And that's three days, okay? Wednesday to Sunday is, uh, anyway. Um, so then I had another appointment the following Wednesday. And he wanted me to go have an ultrasound done on my leg to make sure the blood was getting in there like it's supposed to. And that came back all wrong. Um, they said that for every uh, time, for every three times a normal person's blood circulates through their foot, mine does it once. And um, I said, okay. So then uh, Wednesday morning, I had to go put an MRI on the foot so he could compare it with the old MRI and check it with the x-rays. So I said, okay. So I did that on Wednesday morning, first thing. Then I went up and I saw him. And I'm sitting there and I knew what happened. I was just waiting for him to confirm it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Ooh, yeah. you, you ever get like that? Uh -huh. So oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. he came in and he said, how are you doing, Mr. Harris? And I said, man, I'm doing fantastic. I'm on top of the green and taking some. <laughs> and uh, he said, well, it's fixing to get better. And I said, well, tell me, tell me. And he told me, he said, well, the MRI that we just took mm -hmm. shows that you have no fractures in your oh, foot. Right. You oh, don't right. have um, a Charcot foot. Right. And right. you don't have osteoporosis. Right. Right. Your foot is a normal foot. So I asked him, I said, well, wait a minute, Doc. You said I had this. And now I don't. And he goes, no, you don't. I go, well, praise God. And he goes, I expected that out of you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm thankful that God yet once again moved on my behalf. And, uh, um, I, I have been studying at home. You know, you have, you have days where the walls just kind of close in on you. Um, there's nothing on the television. There really isn't. Um, You'll call people, like Brother Matthew called me, encourage me. I call Brother Matt, uh, Brother Mike calls me, you know, and, and we, we get around talking. You know, there's people that I see. Brother Buddy, I see him. Um, it's all encouragement yes. for me. Right. Yes. And so um, um, I was sitting there at the house, and, and I was flipping through the channels, and I won't go into all that, that I got out of this, but um, I came across a station, and it was the end of it. I don't know what the brother was preaching on. I just caught the last part where they would like for you to buy their, their book or whatever. And um, The man made a statement, and he said, giants don't look so big in a crowd of people. And I said, are you? No, I, I have to disagree. If I put a giant in here, if, if my uncle comes into this, this place He'll stick out. He will stick out. And he wasn't as tall as Goliath was. And so uh, I checked myself and I said, you know, every time I talk about that, I know that David did not call him a, a giant. So I went back to uh, Samuel 17 and I, and I read it all through again. And David never used the word giant again. David called him exactly what he was, an uncircumcised Philistine. And, uh, you know, so many times we have these little bumps in the road like I did with my foot, and somebody will tell you, you've got this, or this is what's fixing to happen, and it's, it's all bad, you know, it's all bad. Well, don't read into that. Because the God that I serve, yeah. in, in Deuteronomy, uh, let me just read this real quick, because I sure don't want to mess this up, because it, really, uh, it really helped me. But in, uh, in Deuteronomy 31 and verse 8, um, this, is, this is the God that I serve. 
He's the one that I give my allegiance to. It says, and the Lord, he it is. Now, I've been taught to recognize that capital L. Do you know what Lord that's talking about? Mm -hmm. That's the Lord God of God. heaven. Amen. The Lord God of heaven. Amen. That's who that is. That's who it is. Uh, it says, he it is that doth goeth before thee. My God goes before me. And Sister Phyllis, when you came up, this was brought back to me. God goeth before you. God goeth before you. And, and uh, it says, he will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. Because my God goes before me. He goes before you. If you need a giant, don't call it a giant. I appreciate the Lord tonight. I was, uh, I was listening and my wife got it while I was at home and she said that she was going boldly. Well, do you know what that word boldly means in that text? It means going with confidence to the one that can give you the answer or what you need. Amen. Knowing, knowing that your that your problem will be solved by him. So, and then I heard one more thing that listen, when you hear something good, repeat it, because it bears repeating. Amen. I heard Brother Marlow get up and he said, When God knocks it down, don't help it up. When God takes it away, don't pick it up. Service. Yeah. You know the worship, yeah. the preaching, yeah. and the song, yeah. and the praise. Yeah. And the yeah. My, my, my. I tell you, if you couldn't enjoy it, let me pray for you. God will help you. Praise the name of the Lord because there's not a more beautiful sight than this right here tonight. The house of God. And let, here's what I know. Here's what I know. Brother Steve was talking about people loving and caring. He talked about the hand that reaches out. There are people here tonight. The Lord is dealing with your heart. And you're touched in this service. By a hand greater than mine. The hand of Jesus. He's touching your heart. And you let him do that. Some people go hard in life. They get very hard. In their life, they get very hard. I've watched people in the church get very hard. I've watched people in the church get very hard. And you try to reach them. You just can't. You just can't. But God has heart is tender and he's reaching it tonight and don't you close your heart's door because he loves you praise the name of the Lord he loves you hallelujah Jesus, that verse, Sister Marlowe, 